God say in Isaiah chapter 55, the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want to and it will prosper everywhere I send it. You will live in joy and peace, say the Lord. May the Lord speak to you in this teaching and you will go in peace and joy. See you in the teaching. Are you ready for the Word of God? Father, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit, who is our greatest teacher. Holy Spirit, you reveal to us the truth of God. Speak to our spirit, Lord. Shine the light of heaven into our heart that we will have the clear understanding of your will and your plan for our life, Lord. We want to please you, Father. We want to honor our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we want to be doers of your word. Thank you, Father. We commit this time to you and ask you to be our ultimate teacher, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I would like to read a couple of scripture before I continue to talk about shining your excellence character to people. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth. This is the word from the Apostle Paul, who was both the pastor, teacher, past, and also prophet and apostles. He was taking care of many churches. Many people were under his care. He said that he experienced the pains of childbirth. Why? Because he can get involved in helping God's people to grow spiritually. He said, until Christ is formed in you. You need to understand that God's will is not just only seeing people saved, come out from darkness, from the hand of the enemy, and they will be able to go to heaven and receive rewards in heaven. But God's will is also that his children will grow up spiritually to become more like Jesus Christ, to become mature people, not baby Christians forever. We learned a few Sundays ago that it's God's will for us to be transformed into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises. The Bible is full of the promises of God. God gave us these promises so that through them you may participate in the, in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desire. Again, many scriptures talk about spiritual growth, about being transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Definitely, as a pastor of this church, I want to see many, many people saved and come into the kingdom. I'm not an evangelist by nature, but a lot of people accept Christ through our ministry anyway. Thank God. And a lot of people send me a message that, oh, you know, I listened to your teaching and I accepted Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad to hear people get saved but we don't stop at only getting saved. We want to see people grow spiritually and become more like Jesus as well. But in our Christian walk, there are always two parts, our part and God's part. We need to do our part and God will do his part. If you notice in the Bible, there are always two camps, two camps. And it's your own choice which camp you're going to choose, which way you're going to choose. That's why the Bible say in the Old Testament, choose now the blessing or the cursing. Choose now 
life or death. Choose now, victory or defeat. You need to choose. It's your own choice. I can teach, but I cannot force you. If you notice in the Bible, there was Cain and there was Abel. The Bible, there was King David and there was also Saul. There was Jesus and Satan. There was also Peter and John and there, also, there were also Judas. You can see that throughout the whole Bible, there are good people and bad people. Good Christians and bad Christians. Immature Christians, carnal Christians, selfish Christians. I believe that Saul was a believer, but he was carnal. And I hope that you choose to be like Abel. You choose to be like Jacob, not Esau. You choose to be like King David, not King Saul. You choose to be like Peter and John, not Judas. And it's your own choice. You make your choice. You do your homework. You go to church every Sunday. You get into the Word of God. You really repent every day. You examine yourself every day, what I am doing here right now. Checking my own heart, checking my own attitudes and motive and my own life. Check every day. You do your work, you, you do your part in order to be godly and to become like Jesus Christ. But thank God, He does His part as well. Today, I would like to talk about God's part. And next time, I'm going to talk about your part, about how you respond to God's part. So we're going to talk to the part that God would do to us. Let me read Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 again. For it is God who works in you. Everyone point to yourself here. In. God works in you to will and to act according to His good purpose. In order to grow up spiritually or to become like Jesus Christ, God does His part by working in us. He is doing something on the inside of us, and we need to respond. Again, next sermon, I'm going to talk about how you respond to God works in your life. God is doing something, but some people respond with rebellion. Some people respond with bad attitude, and that's why they never grow up. I hope that you respond in the right way. So I'm going to talk about the three things that God works in you, and that three things relate to the word grace, G-R-A-C-E. A lot of time people just have a very shallow understanding of the word grace. They say grace means God loved me and I can do anything. God still loved me and forgive me. Oh, God is so gracious to me. I can still smoke. I can still smoke weeds. I can still watch pornography, cheat. God so gracious to me. He's going to forgive me forever. I don't have to worry. I can live any way I want. That is a very shallow and even wrong definition of the word grace. The word grace is much more than just God has mercy on me. Actually, <laughs> if you understand one thing, God loved you, God has grace for you. And one of the ways that God showed love to you is to do spanking. How many parents in this room spank your kids? Why do you spank your kids? You love them. You have grace for them. Is that right? So sometimes God has to do something to check us, check us up and say, hey, repent right now. You are going the wrong direction right now. So let's look at the word grace together. What is grace? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. God helps us to grow spiritually, to become like Jesus by His grace. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. For by grace... You have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, 
not of works, lest anyone should boast. Titus chapter 2 verse 11, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. I'm going to read many scriptures and explain to you. Romans chapter 3 verse 24, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The first thing, the first step of grace is this. God loves us so much. Listen carefully, this is a very simple teaching. God loves us so much. God is so gracious to us. He knows that sin and bondage and our wrong thing, the evil thing in our life will lead us to destruction, will lead us to curse, failure, poverty, sickness, disease, and hell. He loves us so much like a daddy loves his children. He loves. Therefore, he showed his grace to us by sending his grace into the world. And his manifestation of grace is done through his son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world in the form of a man without sin, without any bad thing in his life. He was so pure, holy, perfect. Jesus is the demonstration of God's love. Did Jesus have to come? No. Jesus did not have to come. He came to the world because he was gracious to us. And then Jesus went to the cross, went to the whipping post, and he took our sicknesses, took our curses, poverty, rejection, problems, negative things, all the sins and the punishment of sins, the iniquity of sin on his body. And he can offer to us salvation. So that is the grace of God that happened 2,000 years ago. But because of Jesus, the demonstration of God's grace in the form of a human body named Jesus Christ, who died, who shed his blood for us. Because what he did on the cross, the veil in the temple between the Holy of Holies and the holy place, was torn into two from the top to the bottom. And the Holy Spirit, which is one of the names of the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of Grace, came out from the Holy of Holies. And now all the believers can have the Holy Spirit dwell on the inside of them. Before Jesus died on the cross, the Jewish people, the Israelites, did not have the Holy Spirit in them. They had only the Holy Spirit on certain people, we call the anointing, like kings, priests, prophets, and some workers that God anointed them, put the Spirit on them so that they can serve the Lord. But we are living in a New Testament time, in the New Testament, Testament, a new covenant, which is better than the old covenant. Why is better? Because now the spirit of grace through Jesus Christ, the demonstration of the grace of God, he died on the cross, that the spirit of grace came in us, on us. That's why Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, I read one more time. For it is God, who is God here? The Holy Spirit who works in you, who is in you, the spirit of grace in you to will and to act according to his good pleasure. So the first step of his grace is that he sent Jesus to die for you, to show his love to you so that you will be convinced by the love of God and you respond to his love by repenting of your sin and receive Jesus Christ into your heart once you receive Jesus into your heart and be born again, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace, came into you and dwells in the inside of you. And from that second on, the Spirit of God began to work in you, to will and to act according to the purpose of God, to become more like Jesus. Not only that, the word salvation, zozo, 
not more than just sin is forgiven, and we don't have to go to hell, and we can go to heaven. No, salvation cover everything. I give you example. Pastor Dan know very well. When I was a young man, before I got born again, I was not like Jesus at all. I was very selfish, very money talker. I love money. I was selfish. I was very short temper, and I was very arrogant. I don't care much about people. I care about myself. I never smile. Pastor Da. Sometimes we sat on the bus together to go to a movie. I did not have a car at the time. I date my wife on the bus. She looked at me. Why in the world I date this guy? She was thinking. He never smile. He looked unhappy. I was very negative in English called pessimistic. I was a very pessimistic man. I always talk about negative things, the bad things all the time. I think God, by His mercy, blinded the eyes of Pastor Da to date me. I was not a very good man, actually. I was very selfish and negative and complaining and talk negative all the time. I was in the bondage of the sins of many Thai men in Thailand. Very, very arrogant and very selfish. But those are the bondages in me, the curses. A lot of demons in me too, because before I became a Christian, I gave my life to many idols. I play Vuji board. I, the, I went to the place where they put the spell on my back, and when they pulled the knife out to cut on my skin, the knife did not open anything on my skin. I was able to sit on the nail chair, the chair with all the long nails. I sat on there, and somebody jumped on my lap, so that my body would push into the nails. But even my pants were not torn because of the power of darkness in me. I totally gave my life to evil spirit before I became a Christian. I was in bad shape. I was in big bondage. I did not die yet to go to hell, but my life was in bad bondage. But through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit came inside me, start to work in me. I remember when I first accepted Jesus Christ the first few weeks, suddenly I opened my eyes and I got on the bus and I looked at the poor people around me. I was so arrogant because I I thought I came from a well-to-do family. I was number one in my class. I got to go to medical school. I was very arrogant. When I look at people, I began to feel, wow, these people are so nice. I like them now. <laughs> I began to smile, happy, and the desire to be selfish disappear. I got set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. And one day, a lot of demons came out of me God set me free from demons, from all those evil spirits that had been with me for many, many years. God gave me salvation. God saved me by the power of the Spirit of grace. From demon, from sickness, I used to have eczema. I used to have allergy. Every year, since I was young, I was sneeze, running nose, red eye, we call hay fever every single year. And I have bad skin eczema. And the Holy Spirit came in me. He set me free from eczema. He healed me, saved me. Zozo, healing, make whole from eczema, from hay fever, from bad habits, from bondages, from evil spirit. At least, okay, I was like this on the negative side. Sickness. Spiritual sickness, mental sickness, I was in the dark, deep dark, before I came to know Christ. But after I accepted the grace of God, Jesus, and the Spirit of grace came into me, He at least moved me out of this dark part into the neutral part first. You see, before I became positive like Jesus, He has to move me from dark to light by the grace of God, by the Spirit of God who worked in me. And even to today, year 2020, 
the Spirit of grace to work in me and in you to move you from here, from the dark side to more neutral and go toward positive, go toward more and more and more. Amen? Do I still have the component of doubt in me? Do you think doubt is good? No, unbelief is not good. Unbelief is not God's will. If I want to become like Jesus, I need to have a full faith. Nothing is impossible with God. I need to walk in belief, in faith. So even to today, after being, I got saved in 1981, how many years now? Two, year 2020, can you calculate for me? 39 years? 39 years. After 39 years, I moved from the deep dark to today, but Jesus still there to become like Him. The Holy Spirit still work in me to get rid of the doubt, the unbelief, the lack of love, the selfishness, little by little, move it out and put in more faith, put in more love, put in more mercy and move me more and more and more to become more like Jesus Christ. He worked in me to will and to act. And the same Holy Spirit is working in you to move you from the deep dark more and more and more every year you grow from glory to glory to glory and you become closer and closer to become more like Jesus Christ. Amen? So God wants to get rid of a lot of junks in you, save you from junks, from religious spirit, from selfishness, from doubt, unbelief, lack of mercy, lack of love, love of money, worldly, dirty thoughts, dirty lifestyle. He wants to get rid of that by the power of the Holy Spirit. Definitely the church that welcomes the fire, God's people will move faster than the churches that don't want the fire of God because the fire of God is a big holy ghost. Come and burn all the junk out of you. Romans chapter 5 verse 2, through whom through Jesus. Also, we have access by faith. How you can let the grace of God work in you? You need to have faith. You're saved by grace through faith. You need to have faith that God works in you. One of the reasons I love to teach the Word of God on Sunday, very clear, very detailed, read the Word because I know that you can get everything from God by faith. And if I don't read the Bible, I don't teach you Deep teaching. Sometimes people told me this. I cannot stand this church. He is too serious. He's too serious. He teaches so strong. Ooh. I want to leave this church as soon as possible. And I want to go to church that the pastor just teach something light and easy going. I cannot stand this kind of uh, uh, filet mignon <laughs> diet. I like to eat just salad, a little bit of salad and some. But Pastor Lau like to give New York steak. Medium. Huh? Well done. <laughs> okay, well done. You know, I will steal you from the blessing if I teach you just hors d'oeuvre. You need, to have, you, you need to know the Bible. You need to know how to live a Christian life. You need to know the truth because the truth will set you free. And when you know the truth, you can have faith in it. You can do two things when I preach the truth to you. One thing is this. Another thing is, I noticed sometimes when I preach, I thought I preached so well, and people said, <laughs> It's up to you. Whether you're going to receive the word or not, I do my part. My job is to preach and tell you the truth and pray for you. Your job is to receive and build faith, true faith. Into his, this grace, 
in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. The Bible says in Romans 3, 24, I read a while ago, by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. What is redemption here? Redeem you from demon. Redeem you from bad habit, from evil desire, from all the bad things that is not in heaven. All the things of the man, all the things of evil spirit. He wants to redeem you. Get rid of those things from you so that you become more like Jesus Christ. Everyone say, to be. In our spiritual maturity, there are two parts always. To be and to do. Be and do. He moved you to be like Jesus by the grace, by the spirit of grace. That's why this pastor named Pastor Lau always goes banana for the Holy Spirit. I really goes banana for the Holy Spirit. Because I think if we don't talk about the Holy Spirit and we don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in the church, uh, we are a religion here. We're just a religion. We are not a real disciple of Jesus. If we want to be real Christians, we need the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace who work on the inside of us. Amen? Let's look at the second ways that God gives grace to us. I Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, I will read a few scriptures and explain to you. And God is able to make all grace. Everyone say grace. grace. Hebrew 4, 6, talk about the throne of grace. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, talk about all grace about toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and I will conclude for you. And he said to me, my grace, whose grace? God's grace, the spirit of grace, is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What are these three scriptures talk about? Talking about. Talking about to do. To be, save us from darkness. Move us into the light to be like Jesus. But to become like Christ is not just to be. The Lord Jesus did not come into the world 2,000 years ago and just sit on a chair, do nothing. What did he do? The Bible says, God the Father. Let me read to you. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts 10, 38. The Bible says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace. Jesus depends on the grace of the Father, the Spirit of grace, and power, and how he went around. He did not sit at home, do nothing, watching TV. He went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. The grace of God was with the Lord Jesus Christ. He has the Spirit without measure. I want to be like that. I want to have the Spirit 99.9999% of Jesus Christ before I die. Why? You know, when I went to Sacramento two weeks ago and cast demons out from many members of that church, and I sat down to rest, and I was thinking about Jesus. Wow, this is what Jesus did. He went around to do good, to teach the word, to make disciples, to pray for people to be healed, to cast out demons, to build the church, to lead people to Christ, to raise the dead. We can be like Jesus in what he is doing by depending on the grace of God. 
I want to tell you the truth. The whole truth, nothing but the truth. Do you know that this is the way they say in the court? I want to tell you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. <laughs> when, when the lawyer wants to interview me, we call deposition. Can you raise your hand up? And you tell me, you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Don't lie in the court. Okay, I tell you the truth. Every Saturday, when I read my sermon, my sermon was written in English. I really feel, uh, I cannot do this on Sunday. Uh, now I understand when the Bible say, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. To speak English, preach in English like this for me is so hard. Every Sunday after I finish, somebody here named John will lie me and say, you speak wrong accent. <laughs> and then he record in the line, this is the right way to say, da la la la. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say the last name. <laughs> Many people can name John. I tell you the truth. It's not easy to do like Jesus, to work for God like Jesus. But who is in us to be able to help us to do the good work, to have more money, to have more than enough money, more than enough strength, more than enough wisdom, more than enough anointing, more than enough good things so that we can do good work before we died and go to heaven? Who? The Spirit of Grace. Grace is not the abstract idea. Grace is a person. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. But who is in you right now? The Holy Spirit who can make you do those things. Amen? Amen. The grace of God make you lay hand on the sick and the sick recover. The grace of God helped you to witness for, to somebody who needs Jesus Christ. The grace of God made you to become and to do the function of the godly husband. The grace of God helped you to find a job that you have more than enough salary to feed your family and to support the mission, to do the work of God. If you notice carefully in the Bible, the Bible record about Cain, about Esau, about Saul, and about Judas. But if you notice the percentage of the word of God here that talk about King David, Elijah, Joshua, Jacob, Abel, Jesus, John, Peter, much more than those people. Are you getting the message? Do you want to be history maker? Do you want to be history changer? Those who choose to be able, uh, choose to be Cain, choose to be Judas, choose to be Saul, will not change the history of the world. And no one talk about them after they die. I hope that, and I believe that, after I died and Jesus hasn't come back, many Thai people in Thailand will still talk about me and Pastor Da 100 years from now because they're still watching our YouTube at that time. If you live a life that's full of the grace, you become like Jesus. You do the right thing in this generation. You're going to be a history maker. You're going to be a world changer. And you're going to leave big marks on this generation for the kingdom of God. You have to choose now, you're going to be Ruth or you're going to be Opa. You know, Naomi has two granddaughters, uh, not grand, has two daughters-in-law. One is Opa. Opa say, bye-bye, grandmother, my mother-in-law. I don't want to be with you anymore. I need a new husband. I'm going to move back to my hometown. But Ruth chose to be godly, to be faithful, to love 
her mother-in-law, pick up the grain, give to her mother-in-law. She shows to be a godly woman. And what happened? God gave her Boaz, the owner of the field. And today, we still talk about Ruth. No one talk about Opa. Is that right? God still talk about Ruth to today because she is a godly woman and she is also the ancestor of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many people want to be like Ruth? How many people want to be like Esther? Mary? Yes, I want to be. I'm looking now at David's. I'm looking now at Ruth's with S because many Ruth's there. I'm looking now at Mary's and Esther's and Daniel's and Joshua's and Peter's and Paul's. I'm not looking at Judas's here. Amen. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. How can the disciples of the early church perform great signs and wonders? By the grace of God. We can do what Jesus did by the grace of God. Amen? Ephesians 3, 7. Third one. And I'm done. Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of His power. Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one, everyone, point to yourself, each one. I'm one of them. Are you one of them? Are we are one of the disciples? Okay. Each one. Point to the neighbor. You too, you too. You too, you too. Okay, each one. Each one of us. Grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Number three. We can become like Jesus Christ. To be like Him in our character. Safe from evil desire, all the curses, all the bad stuff, all the sinful nature, evil spirit, and move toward more and more like Jesus, have more love, more, more, more love, more, more, more faith, more, more, more compassion, more, 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 more patience and long-suffering. I'm so glad that God gave Pastor Da more long-suffering <laughs> because it's not easy to live with me. Long suffering to all the wives in this room. Especially wife. <laughs> Long sufferings. Amen. And he also gave us grace, the spirit of grace, so that we can do good things. I believe with all my heart. I can be a very good neurosurgeon today because of the grace of God. Really, God, the Holy Spirit in me taught me how to perform surgery. He actually, many techniques that I do now was given to me, were given to me by the Holy Spirit. He showed me to do this and that and that. So I, I developed technique after I finished the medical school. Now I have more technique than before by the grace of God. You can be businessman by the grace of God, what to do, what to say, how you invest, how you do things in your business to do good so that you have more money and more prosperity to bless the kingdom. Do good. By the grace of God, you need to love the Holy Spirit. You need to depend and by faith receive that grace. Every morning you wake up in the morning, you go out to work in your office. Oh, by grace, by grace, by grace. God, give me grace. Hallelujah. Give me grace in the name of Jesus. You need to live that way. You depend on the grace of God. You can be a good mom, good dad, good husband, good wife by the grace of God. Everyone say, by grace. By grace. But number three here, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 and 4, 7, you can be a servant of God by His grace. 
God give grace to you so that you can serve the Lord. In fact, I don't believe in pew warmer at all after I was born again. I don't believe in just going to church to warm the seat. I believe every believer should serve the Lord. Every believer should discover their gifts or the measure of their grace and get involved and serve the Lord and build the kingdom of God. Everyone, no if and or but, no excuses. You should serve the Lord. Some way, somehow, maybe a greeter, welcoming, do something. You find something to do for God. Don't sit around, do nothing. I'm so proud of a couple in this room, Mr. and Mrs. Belleville, who served the Lord when our brothers, our one sister in the church really has some difficulty. They went to the hospital, visit, help take care of the house. When I heard that, I was so blessed to know that that couple served the Lord by serving a sister in the church. Amen? We should always serve one another, do something for the kingdom of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Let me show you a few people who received the grace from God. Genesis chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Why Noah found grace? Because he was a perfect man in his generations and he walked with God. Because of the grace of God, he and his family were saved from the flood. Luke chapter 2 verse 40, you can see that all these people in the Bible received the grace from God. And the child, mean Jesus, grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Did Jesus serve by the grace of God? Yes. Noah needed the grace. Jesus needed the grace. The apostle, Acts 4, 33, great grace was upon them all. Acts chapter 11, verse 23, talk about Barnabas and the church in Antioch, the city of Antioch. When he, Barnabas, came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them, them mean believers, new believers in Antioch, all that with purpose of heart, that they should continue with the Lord. Wow, God's grace is so important in every generation. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, I am what I am. And his grace toward me, everyone say grace was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. You can be a good businessman. You can serve the Lord. You can do anything God called you to do by His grace. And what is the grace? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of grace in you. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Last one. 2 Timothy 2.1. Okay, we talk about Noah, Jesus, Paul, the apostle, now Timothy. You therefore, my son Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Members of the Hope International Church, be strong in the grace of God. Receive more of the Holy Spirit. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Surrender to the Spirit of grace. Depend on the grace that comes from the Holy Spirit. Don't be prideful. Depend on yourself. Humble yourself and depend on the grace of God in everything. 
everything you do and you want to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many people say, I need the grace? How many people, I need more grace? How many people say, I approach the throne of grace with bonus? How many people say, I need the grace? Amen. Amen. And we can become like Jesus Christ. Next time, we're going to learn how we respond to the grace. The right way and the wrong way. And I pray that you're going to respond to the grace of God in the right way. This is the reason why our church loves the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit of God will give us more grace. Amen? Grace upon grace. Upon grace. Layers of grace. More of the Holy Spirit, more grace. We need more grace. Amen? Father, we thank you so much for teaching us your part of helping us to become mature, to become like Jesus Christ, to be mature Christians, not to be baby Christians forever, Lord. We want, Lord, to depend on your grace, to remove all the evil desire, all the works of the flesh, all the evil spirit, from our life, Lord. We depend on your grace, Father, the grace from the Holy Spirit to really do good things, to be successful teachers, businessmen, teachers, nurses, doctors, employees, employers. And by your grace, we will be promoted. We will have more than enough to do every good deeds. You sent us our Lord just like you sent Jesus to go around from place to place to deliver people from the work of the devil and to do good works. Lord, also anoint all of us by your grace to be your servant in this generation. Help us to find our callings find the measure of grace. What type of grace we have. Some of us may be graced by you to be a teacher. Some of us evangelists. Some of us ministry of helps. Some Bible teacher. Children program ministers. Archers. Lord. Do the work of the te technical part in the church. Help us, Lord, to find the grace in our life, Lord. We will serve you, Lord, all the days of our life, Father. We want to receive the grace just like Noah, Jesus, Paul, apostles, people in Antioch, Timothy. We want to receive your grace just like Ruth, Esther, Mary, King David, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Daniel, Joseph, Jehoshaphat, Peter. We want to receive your grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everyone say with me, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I repent of my sin. Jesus, come into my life. I will serve you and follow you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. I believe that you are not just a hearer of the Word, but you are the doer of the Word of God. Because you obey the Word, you follow the Holy Spirit, you are blessed. And you shall be the head, not the tail. You shall be above, not beneath. May the Lord go with you and bless you and use you to be the blessing to many people around you. Thank you so much. Jesus 
Christ. I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken, and you are free from the bondage. And you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you, and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace, His blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness, His favor, and you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer, and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat. You have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision, the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you, and you shall be His witness in this generation. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jehovah Hamachi.